Have you ever wondered what the Mona Lisa would look like if she was just a little bit older? Or perhaps you'd like to add a lovely moustache to that rather excellent photo of your girlfriend. And all this simply by using English words to edit the image. Sure, why not, eh? Welcome to Instruct Pix to Pix. Turn one picture into another, powered by your words and stable diffusion. Now, the first thing you're going to need is an image to edit. This can be any image you like, but do note it's going to come out a slightly different size unless it is already 512 by 512. I'm going to use this picture here because I'm very good at choosing pictures. Next up is the most difficult part. What text are you going to use? Well, if we have a look at the original GitHub repo and scroll down here, instruct pix to pix learning to follow image editing instructions, we can see a variety of examples there. We can swap sunflowers with roses in that first one. We can add fireworks to the sky, replace the fruits with cake and all those other examples there. So you can see it's pretty simple, a fairly short phrase, and that will edit the image for you. In my example here, I'm going to give him some armor. Excellent, so now I've got the image, I've got the text. We're going to ignore these settings down here for a moment. Apart from steps, I am going to turn up to 100 just to make it more like the original Gradio interface. If we have a look at the generation, we can see that, oh, hang on, it's, it's not really changed at all, has it? All right. I guess that means it doesn't work. No, it means you haven't read the tips over on the original GitHub repo as well, which are also available at the bottom of the Hugging Face Diffusers website too. Lots of scrolling down, but here it is, tips. If you're not getting the quality result that you want, there may be a few reasons. Is the image not changing enough? Yes, that's our problem here. Your image guidance weight may be too high. This value dictates how similar the output will be to the image. So if we have a look over here, we've got this image guidance scale there, and that the lower that is, the more the image will change, and the higher that is, the less the image will change. So in our case, it seems to be a bit too high because the image hasn't changed enough. So let's put that down to 1.4, regenerate and see what that comes out like instead. Excellent. As you can see, he now has some armor, even though the painting itself looks a little bit strange, but you get the idea. Play with those two guidance scales, the text in the image until you can get the output exactly how you want it. There's another option there as well, which I've already been through briefly, the number of steps. So the more steps you do, generally speaking, the better quality the output. But note, however, that these values won't always be exactly the same for each picture. Let's try a different picture. So we've got different input here, exactly the same on everything else. Let's give it a fixed seed as well. Generate, see what that looks like. And there we go. I think that is a little bit too strong. It's done quite well, but the image guidance value probably needs to go up a little bit in this case. Small, simple changes tend to work a little bit better than longer and more complex ones. In this example, I've said, give him sunglasses and a beard. Now, if we try both of those things, even with that guidance scale that worked nicely for the armor, as you can see, it's changed it and it's given him a beard, but he hasn't got any sunglasses. If we change this guidance scale down a little bit, if we pop it down to maybe 1.2, run it again with that same give him sunglasses and a beard, and what do we get? Well, this time he does indeed have sunglasses and a beard, but as you can see, the image has changed a fair amount. You will need to lower the guidance scale the more you want to change the image. If we say, just give him sunglasses, for example, and put the guidance scale back up to 1.4, then even though it couldn't do it when we said give him sunglasses and a beard, just the sunglasses by themselves, absolutely fine. It can give him sunglasses. There they are. And of course, you don't have to make just small changes. I just mentioned that they tend to work better. You can change the entire image as well. So for this example, I've got turn it into an anime version using the same guidance scale as before and the same seed. And here we get a fairly reasonable anime version. Again, play with those guidance scales for the text and image to see the output that you would prefer. You can do really big changes. So let's take this dog and turn the dog into a cat. Here we'll drop the guidance scale for the image down to 1.2 and see how that comes out. And there we have nicely turned that dog into a cat. 
You can indeed change it even more as well. So let's turn that dog into a cat and make it a painting. And we'll also increase the weight for the text and see what that turns out like. And there we have the dog turned into a cat and the image has also become a painting. Of course, if you turn the image guidance weight all the way up to something like 2.5, then it will be mostly like the original image. So there we have the dog, but with some very strange cat-like eyes. Now, I've been using the automatic 1111 extension here, but there are loads of different ways that you can do this for yourself. As usual, all this information is down in the video description, so do be sure to take a look down there. First off, if you're not really into using computers and stuff, then this option is for you. It's the Hugging Face Space. No install or GPU needed. It's completely free. You just run it in your web browser. However, queue times do apply. It was around 600 seconds for each generation when I was testing. You've also got the original version from the original Instruct pix to pix repo, as you can see there from the quick start. Very easy to get running, assuming you've got Anaconda installed. They've got an Anaconda configuration file ready for you there. So you can just conda env create minus f environment.yaml. That will create your conda environment. Just activate it, download the checkpoints, and then you can run the Gradio app. It looks very similar to the Hugging Face Space. As you can see there, I have made them both smile. You get all the tips down at the bottom there too. So it's kind of useful to have that when you are just starting out and playing around. One thing to note, however, is that that download script does go to Barclay University to download the files, and it is a little bit slow. If instead you go across to the Hugging Face space and click the Files and Versions, you will note there there is an Instruct pix to pix checkpoint and also a Safe Tensors as well. So if you're using the original app from that GitHub repo, it's much quicker to download the checkpoint file from there. That will also work in Automatic 11.11, although there is a Safe Tensors option there, which is probably better as it's safe. It says Safe Tensors in it, right? And just to note that this original Gradio interface does require at least 18 gig of VRAM, so you will probably be more interested in this next option, the Automatic 11.11 extension. This gives results very, very similar to that original Repos Gradio app. I've tested them both. They are ever so slightly different when I use the same seed and everything, but it's close enough to be good. It's about two times faster, of course, in the Automatic 11.11 repo. Lots of advantages there. You also only need about six gig of VRAM, so a massive saving on VRAM requirements if you are running it in Automatic 11.11. It works with Stable Diffusion 1.5 embeddings as well, which is another bonus. That's going to be quite strange, but you will, of course, need the Automatic 11.11 web interface installed. Very easy to get it going. Just go across to the extensions tab and then install from URL, copy and paste the URL in there, and then go back across to installed, click apply and restart UE, and you should see there the stable diffusion web UE instruct pix to pix That should be ticked and you should get the instruct pix to pix tab appear after you have applied and restarted. Now, don't forget that you will need to select the Instruct pix to pix safe tensors that you downloaded into your Stable Diffusion directory. Here it is in my Stable Diffusion directory. That's where I downloaded it to. So when you go to this, you've got Safe Tensors. You click on that and you click Download. It should come up with a pop-up. And rather than installing it into the Instruct pix to pix checkpoints like I've got there, I go to my Stable Diffusion web UI. I go to Models, Stable Diffusion, and there I can just download it. Obviously, I've already got it downloaded. It is 7 gig, but just put it in your Stable Diffusion Web UI Models Stable Diffusion directory, and then you will be able to select it as the model from your Stable Diffusion Checkpoint Chooser up the top there. There are also a couple of other ways that you can run this, such as through Imaginary. This is a different text-to-image program. Maybe I'll go through that in another video, but not in this one. If you want me to, do let me know. And of course, if you want a programmatic way to do that, then the Hugging Face Diffusers is the way to go. This now supports Instruct pix to pix as well. And if you enjoyed that nerdy rodent geekery, then perhaps you'd be interested in this video as well.